Hello again, it's uh, David Thomas, archivist at the Cornwall Record Office. Welcome to Truro and to another session of David's Dazzling Documents here at the CRO. One of the things about archives is they reflect every, and I mean every aspect of life in the past, even the seamier side and the illegal side of life. On the table today we have an enormous and impressive volume on the cover of which is the royal arms of King William IV of England. And this is, in fact, one of the jail registers of the former uh, Cornwall Jail up at Bodmin. And it's bound, actually, in a form of binding called Russia bands and in gold and red leather. Let's look inside and see what, uh, what we can find out about the criminals of the early part of the 19th century. One of the things I found when I was looking through was this entry in 1838 in January. And this re actually relates to a 10-year-old child called Thomas Richards of St Blasey, who was charged with breaking and entering the dwelling of, and the name is not inserted, at St Blasey, and stealing therefrom a quantity of oranges, apples and whip cord. He was 10, he was 4 foot 4 in height, he had dark eyes, brown hair, he was a fresh complexion, and his reading and writing were imperfect at ten. He was obviously single, and he had a brown spot on his left side of his face and a scar over his right eye. His behaviour was noted by the jail keeper as orderly. He was in for just a day, from the 2nd to the 3rd of January 1838. Did that short sharp shock in 1838 deter him from perhaps a further criminal career just imagine what he would have felt like at the age of 10. further down the page is a good example of the type of record we can find in the jail record this relates to a man called benjamin gerrans and in the days before photography they noted all the distinguishing marks on the prisoners in case they escaped He's marked with Indian ink on his right arm, BG, for Benjamin Gerrans, and an anchor below. And he's got crossed arrows and a heart, and rather nicely, the 15 Cornish Byzants. His behaviour was also noted as orderly. And there are many people in these registers who their tattoos are recorded. If you're interested in tattoos, go along to the Falmouth Maritime Museum and you will see the current exhibition tattoo, in fact, the, the, in which the best of these jail registers is actually being shown at the moment. Um, if we look at um, some of the other prisoners in here, for example, you have Thomas Andrews, a minor of Dulo, formerly of St Just, and he's charged with stealing at St Just. Um, he's 24, he's 5 foot 3 and a half. Not many men, if any, over six foot tall at all at this time and he's got um, no whisker on the left side of his face presumably he had on the right so we get a very good detailed description of what these people um, actually looked like at the time and some of the punishments in some of these registers you actually had the men were put on the treadmill like a sort of giant hamster wheel and the ladies were put in the uh, prison laundry to do washing some of the registers also, their weights were recorded when they came into the jail and when they left. And you have um, people increasing in weight and then, de then decreasing. Sometimes they had a better meal perhaps in, in prison and sometimes they lost weight because of the exercise that they received. It's a fascinating um, connection of records. Um, for instance, here you've also got another person called William Tilly and he's charged with stealing in the borough of the Scard a brass candlestick, the property of John Parkin. He's 35 and very accurately recorded at five foot three and a quarter inches with hazel eyes, light brown hair, fresh complexion. He has a T mark and a ring round uh, his finger and his real name <laughs> is noted as William Nan Kibble so he's not honest about what he was actually called gain orderly behaviour and discharged after about six months in April 1841. Did your ancestors have a criminal history? These are the records you need to perhaps examine throughout Cornwall 
In fact, many of them have been transferred to CD-ROM and Index, so they're available also in a much more in, uh, readable and accessible format. Do come along and enjoy them.